We are now going into the wonderful world of the patent attorney. What are the weird and wonderful inventions that come your way? To explain them from Ray's legal company? What are you? Yeah. Philbert. to do a presentation, but let's go. When I first started this, I, I didn't realise the scope it was going to be, so it's going to be fast and furious, it's trying to keep up. <laughs> so it's going to be a random walk through a bunch of physics inventors and patents of probably over the last century. So these are some faces you may or may not recognise. Einstein being one, Mr Edison, Bunch of others you'll learn along the way. Okay. So Mr. Edison, he was widely known as one of the most prolific inventors of the 20th century. He had over a thousand US patents, 2,000 worldwide. Now, these days, he doesn't even make the top 10. He started out with voice recorders, something the US still can't figure out, but <laughs> recorders. He was the first person to do a, a tattoo pencil. The phonograph, that is the, author, the inventor of the gramophone. Dynamo is his biggest invention in what he built the Edison Power Company on, his DC power. He built both his company and reputation on that. And of course, everyone knows he built the practical light bulb. Or did he? He also dabbled in a bunch of other things like motion picture cameras and a lot of energy um, patents as well, which we don't need to see. Tesla he started out working for Alexander Graham Bell as a drafter. He drafted, he drew the, pat, the drawings for Graham Bell's patents on the telephone and went to work for Thomas Edison. And while he was there, he invented new ways for DC power to be more efficient and along the way realised that wasn't the way to go, so he decided to go with AC power instead. Which of course Edison, having built his reputation on DC, didn't like. So he licensed the AC to the Western House Electric Company for uh, a couple of dollars per power plant. <coughs> he, a lot of patents on electric lighting systems as well, including the first Tesla coil patent in what are we, 1891. And he did a lot of work on power transmission. He was trying to, trying to do wireless power transmission, which is something people are still trying to make efficient today and failing miserably. He also dabbled in flight. So he was the first one to develop a vertical takeoff machine. I don't know if he ever built it, but it looks pretty scary, so I'm glad he didn't do. Mr. Einstein, everyone knows Einstein, uh, maybe more for his papers than his patents. That's because he didn't actually have many. He had maybe three inventions, but he was more of a collaborator. He designed a refrigeration system with uh, Mr. Sizer, Sizer here. He had a sound reproduction system, which was the first research into a hearing aid. And he d developed a automatic light sensing camera. So he had a photoelectric cell in his camera and a, and a wheel that would rotate around to automatically adjust the light hitting the photo cell. He also designed clothing. <laughs> So it's probably better than when he's stuck to collaborating rather than striking out himself. <laughs> Some of the inventions that changed the world with communications, we all recognise these. Transportation power, obviously, computing. Radio. Everyone knows Google and Marconi developed radio, did he? He had the patent in 1897, <laughs> but that was a sparse wireless system, so it was very broadband, he couldn't actually transmit voice with that. It was only a Morse code, so it was just a signalling pattern. Tesla came along and he did it. He was doing his wireless power transmission and had a bunch of patents on wireless power. Marconi finally came back and got a, a patent on a viable radio system after having been blocked for the last five years by Tesla's patents. And once he got that patent, um, it, it was all on for the young and old. He found fame and fortune with being the radio provider for 
military. Problem was, he decided to sue the US patent co the US government for, for infringement for wireless systems in World War II. <laughs> so the courts had validated all the Marconi patents in favour of Tesla, and he was finally it was finally acknowledged as the father of radio after you died. But radio continues on, and the modern radios today would, would, would not be possible without crystal oscillators from guys like Edward Felch, you've probably never even heard of. This is, this is him with a ICBM guidance system. Incandescent light bulbs, we saw Thomas Edison invented those, didn't he? But what about Humphrey Day in the 1800s? Warren Delarue, 1820. Henry Woodland. Beat Edison by a good number of years with his patent. Joseph Swan finally becomes Edison. And since then, you know, it's gone on again. William Coolidge has a tungsten filament. And since then, again, there's been over a thousand patents with the word light bulb in the title in the last hundred years. Airplanes, everyone knows. Wilbur and Orville Wright invented the airplane. What about this guy who flew a plane in 1901? And that's, that's apparently the photo that proves it. <laughs> <laughs> a New Zealand farmer flew his monoplane for 300 yards before he crashed. The Wright brothers finally came in in 1903. A bit behind the times, actually. But they got their patent, not for the airplane, but for a method of controlling a fly, a, an airplane. So they had lateral portions on the wings to generate different angles on the, on the wing plane to control it. And they spent the next uh, 20 years before Wilbur's death in patent infringement suits trying to stop people from using ailerons. It's a new version of uh, incline wing planes. Helicopter, Igor Sikorsky. Actually, that one's right. But he was standing on the shoulders of giants. Leonardo Vinci obviously had the first patent, first drawing of a, everyone the same. Edison actually had a pattern using box kites of all things. But Sikorsky finally came in and actually worked out how to stop it rotating with the rear rotator and a method of controlling it with the cyclic rotation. And he actually flew it himself. <laughs> Transistors, William Shockley, everyone knows that. But he, well, the first field effect transistor was actually a good 20 years before him by Leonfeld. He came in from Nokia Bell Labs. He had, had a patent, but he couldn't make it work. It was his collaborators at Bell Labs, Barding and Bretagne, that actually got the first PN junction to work and therefore transistors took off. Fusion fission reactors. There's Leo Sizer again, you've seen him before. This guy, you might remember my nose, Enrico Fermi. So that had the first patent, but it actually turned out to be wrong. He couldn't make it work either. So Fermi came in and they had a neutron reactor with the graphite and uranium in a metal lattice. I'm getting it. Jim, yes, but no one knows this guy. He's Roger Easton. He was US Naval Lab's problem solver. It originally developed just with two satellites. But four is obviously better, but the important thing is the presence of your navigator is not revealed. Very important for naval research. And he also had a lot of other patents on how to make it work with crystal oscillators for timing systems. Mobile phone, who, who does that one? Well, that's actually a long way back from the 70s. Powerful guys from Nokia Bell Labs again, the Ideas Factory. Made more efficient by actually having handoff between cells by Mr. Joel. And Motorola took up the flag and they finally developed the first mobile phone in 1973. But it took them 10 years to actually start selling them because it was too expensive. And of course, got the iPhone. And there's a few that didn't change the world, but the great anyway, like any very machines. Apparently it works, but, and it's capable of a light, but it doesn't say how. And problem taking off from Earth. <laughs> but an actual anti-gravity device, this guy. <laughs> that one's obviously done by wires, but how you do it on stage. 
you, you can develop it yourself and you make a pattern. So it's all, that, all done with the anti-gravity boot. And there's some strange ones, there's the high five simulator, a beer umbrella, a butt kicking device that you power by power yourself. And of course the motorized ice cream cone because everyone hates being able to rotate, not rotate their own ice cream. <laughs> useful. Fire pen is useful, obviously. What about methods for exercising cats? Maybe not so. And the truly frightening. <laughs> What surprised me most about this one is that a woman was involved in the theatre. <laughs> and of course, that's always a great source of information, so if you ever had this argument, you know, you know the solution, you now know the answer. Thank you.